I'll be honest with you. And I, I actually respect, and I, you give me a lot to think about. And without being arrogant, at my echelon, it's not often I sit down with somebody and they say something that makes me think. But you've given me something to think about. And I, I genuinely, I'm going to think about it. Yo, what's up, guys? So today's going to be a little bit of a different concept. This week, I'm trying out something new just to see if I touch on different subjects that I haven't spoken about. So we're going to be looking at a podcast. Uh, for those of you who have seen it, great. Uh, you can have my reaction to it. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to leave the description down below in this video. Enjoy. About if you're going to, if you have problems doing business with someone who cheats, you're never going to do any business. Unfortunately, he's also pretty right because it's, it's, uh, yes, it's but right. Not with partners though. I don't feel like you want to get in business with a partner. I mean, think about this. He, he shares a family bloodline with the person that he's robbing. I'm nothing to him. That's true. And that is infallible logic. So how can I even, for me, my, my girl, right? She's my partner. Yeah. It, I couldn't focus if I had to come do this interview with you and I know she's out somewhere. Now I have to think about what she's doing. It's taking away from me. Yeah. So if I'm breaking bread with a man and I'm doing business with him, I can't sit around wasting my time thinking about what he's doing. And you're completely right. And I, I mean, this is true. They, they talk about having this kind of trust in other people when you work with them. I mean, no stranger to this kind of thing, but I, I will say that when you have a business partner, when you're investing time and you're investing money into a person, into a business, you want to make sure that the person that you're working with, you don't have to worry about when you're not with them. So that's, that's super important. I, I totally understand that. But as a honest individual, I have to sit here and be honest and analyze myself and analyze my own romantic relationships. Am I completely faithful in the traditional sense? No. Why is that? It's a good question. I'm not, I can't say exactly why that is, but I, I think that probably the biggest decline in the Western world, I have to accept, even though I partake in it, and even though I am guilty of it, I think the biggest failing of the Western world is that men and women do not stick together anymore. I think it would fix I, I, a lot of problems. I find that very fascinating that you know that's the problem. You, you teach men to be better men and to yeah. fix their problems. Don't run away from it. But you know that monogamy is a challenge for you. But you don't want to... It's not a challenge. Monogamy is not a challenge for me. Monogamy is a decision that every man must make. But for you to make that decision, you have to sit down and decide that, you know, this woman is worth me being monogamous to, which is fine. I think the biggest struggle that men have in the Western world today is finding a woman who they believe is worth being monogamous to. I don't... In days of old, high value men, important men, kings, warriors, whatever, had multiple wives. And they had to look after the multiple wives, or they had mistresses, and they had children with them all, and they had to look after them all. Mm -hmm. In certain cultures today, that is still the case. In certain religions today, that is still the case. In the Christian world, in the Western world, we have said that's unacceptable. We should be monogamous. Yeah. But then you have the majority of men who are monogamous are cheating. The ones who are not cheating are using prostitutes sometimes or going to strip clubs sometimes or consuming pornography. So they're not truly actually loyal. So you've moved the idea of a man having three or four women he loves and taken care of. This is true. I mean, we, we see it everywhere. We see this kind of substitution in many places. Um, right. We see it in, in a lot of different subjects that I won't touch on, but I will say, right, as we have drifted over from the society of males who were polyamorous and who had multiple partners, multiple wives, all that, we've shifted over into a sort of fake society where men are now more monogamous than they were before, right? But all we've done is switched over from men having multiple partners to having one and then having to resort to things like cheating, like going behind their partner's back, being with another person, going to a strip club, like Andrew's talking about, uh, watching porn, which is now very popular today, or, or OnlyFans, like all of these things, they're, they're substitutions for male biologies. It's not to say that, uh, that we don't need to blame these guys, right? Obviously that's their decision and it's up to them what they do, but like, this is the biology of things. We, nothing has changed except for the methods of how we do it, of how we choose to not be monogamous. To a man having one woman he's supposed to love and doing a whole bunch of things in secret. You've just subsidized monogamy and you've removed it all towards pornography, 
and degeneracy. As a Christian man, I was waiting for the right woman. Yeah. And I came to this guy and he goes, I don't understand. I know you're a Christian. And I go, listen, bro, I'll be a good Christian man to a good Christian woman. When I find somebody who has good morals and I know that she'll have my back and she'll do good. And when God presents me that girl, I will be a good man to her. Yeah. And he asked me something that changed my life forever. He goes, well, if you're the son of God and you're asking for his daughter, why would that father ever give you a daughter when you treat everybody else like garbage? Here's the beauty of this conversation, right? I'm not necessarily a religious person. For you folks watching, there are a lot of you who aren't religious at all and who've never read the Bible, who've never gone to church. And still, I can share this idea with, with George here, right? How can you expect certain things to come and certain things to happen if you're not behaving the way that you should in your day-to-day -day life, right? Whenever, whenever people expect certain outcomes, the, the general idea is that you put in the work and you put in the process to be able to achieve that. The problem nowadays is that we still want that same, um, we want that same effect, right? We want to be able to receive from other people and attract and get from other people, but we don't want to put in the work to, um, to actually get to that point, to actually be able to receive and to be, um, to be good enough to receive those things from other people and from the world. So that, that's, that's a really big issue. What he talks about here is super important. How can you expect something if you're not behaving how you should in your day-to-day -day life? You're not taking the steps to being able to achieve that. And so I had to think, I think when it comes to blessings, I believe that it's given from God. Yep. And to move on to new blessings, you have to handle what you've been given. So if I've been given the fame and the money and the access to women, God's monitoring me. Okay, are you gonna go fool around, yeah. act like trash? Can you be trusted? Could you be trusted with this daughter that I have over here? Yes. Kind of like that um, picture that where Jesus is holding a beautiful bear behind him, yep. and then you're holding on to this lifestyle that you still want, but you're like, ah, this is great. And God's like, no, 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 give it to me. Show me you're ready for it, and then I'll present it, like any good father would yes, be. Absolutely. Um, and I did, I cleaned up my act, I was celibate. Yeah. And, I, and I was showing him, I'm trying now to be ready. Yeah. And then I found a beautiful girl and then I became monogamous yeah. and then I have a good partnership. Uh, you, everything you're saying is completely true. And I agree with you. There's two ways we can answer the question. We can talk about it from a religious perspective and what you just described and you're right, being a God fearing man is going to lead a woman in the correct direction because a, a woman is a reflection of her man. And that's why you see if a woman gets with a bad guy who does drugs, she ends up doing drugs. This is true. I mean, they, they are the ones that attach to a man and adapt their habits and adapt their their routines. Generally, a supportive traditional woman is going to be someone that uh, boosts you in the right direction, someone that helps you do the right things, not sinks you back in into the wrong direction and into addiction and all that sort of thing. So it's very important who you choose when you're picking out a partner, especially if it's going to be a partner that's going to last you the rest of your life and doing bad things and a man can lead her in the wrong direction. She comes from our ribs, metaphorically and physically and mentally, right? Yeah. So if I'm going to be, like you're saying, doing drugs, she's going to follow my lead. Absolutely. When you have very rich, powerful men and they're told by the public sphere, you're not allowed to have more than one woman, but they don't have God to control them. They're godless. Mm -hmm. Then they say, okay, well, how can I satisfy myself if God's not restricting me? The society is saying I can only have one woman. I'm not allowed to have four or five, which would satisfy me in some regard for my ego or unhealthy reason or whatever my reason is. So I'm going to end up doing things in private. I'm going to end up doing things in secret. Mm -hmm. And then you have Epstein's Island appear. So it's kind of interesting. God is important and God is extremely required to restrict people. But if you take the God out of the element mm -hmm. and you only use society to try and restrict the sexual desires of people and tell them they have to be monogamous, you're going to end up with more degeneracy than if men were allowed to be poly. poly and so this is where the this is where the logic comes in, right? And this is when we start talking about the restrictions of society and if and if you are a religious or aren't a religious person. Logic behind it is is that if you are restricted by society to not be able to revert to your uh, your biological needs as a man you're going to find a substitute for it. You're, you're going to need to divert in a, in a direction where you can still be somewhat satisfied, satisfy those biological needs as a man, 
right? These sexual needs and not be shut down or completely shut out from society, right? Canceled. Um, so men, right? Men in today's society are diverting back to pornography, only fans. They're literally paying people or paying women or men online. It's, it's basically porn. It, it's honestly the weirdest thing I've ever seen, but we won't talk about that. Men are needing to divert back to these, these needs because this, this is something that's biological. It's not something that goes away naturally. So, and, and that's, that's a really big issue. That's what's causing so much, uh, so much of this, uh, problem in, in our modern society. Today. As the world gets more messed up, I'm leveraged against chaos. As the world becomes a bigger mess, as people struggle to survive to pay their bills, as people become more and more unhappy, as the wars start, all this craziness, people sit there and go, do I want to be entertained by clowns? Do I want to watch these streamers who are clowns? Do I want to be entertained? Or do I want a solution? Do I want some form of stability? Who is saying things which can actually help me, which actually will directly impact my life in real time and make me feel better? So that's also why a lot of people will forgive me for being semi-abrasive, because I feel like as the world gets more messed up, which it is, people are going to learn some very abrasive, harsh lessons. And sometimes when you've gone through a very harsh lesson, to be given a solution which isn't harsh, you're not going to believe it. To be given a harsh solution makes you feel like, okay, this guy knows exactly what he's talking about. I was on a podcast very recently, I don't think he's even come out yet, and I was explaining to, to somebody, we were talking about depression, which everyone asked me about. I'm going to circle back to that. I have something in my notes for that. Yeah, and I was saying that as a man, your life is supposed to be shit. My argument to this is people go, oh, I don't feel good. I say, good. Your life as a man is going to be terrible the entire time. Who told you? And this is something that a lot of guys that I know, a lot of people that I know are afraid of. They, they start saying things like, oh, but what if this goes wrong? Well, oh, but I don't want to do this. You know, I, I don't want to work a nine to five job every single day and, and grind and work my ass off. I want to go party. I want to go like fuck different, different women. I want to go do this and that. I want to go have fun, enjoy my twenties, bro. Realize that this fun that you're talking about, it's only going to be temporary. If you don't work on your basics and you don't, you don't double down on your weaknesses and you don't work on the things that are fucked up about yourself. And Andrew talks about this a lot. He talks about his accountability mirror, right? Who you can look at in the mirror and say, this, this, and this are fucked up. How am I going to fix it? Right. And, and nobody wants to have that conversation with themselves. And this sort of self-improvement aspect isn't, isn't as common in men as it has been for the last decade or so. And we're, we're sinking deeper and deeper into this pool of, of pain and, and misery and depression and beta males and, and all this crap. Right. So it's, it's a really, really big problem. How they used to push you down when you were yeah, a kid. Yeah, that's right. Your mom to... used to be upset about yeah. this. Yeah. Let's time travel back to you as a child. Sure. Because I feel like what made you who you are now is based mostly off of how you were raised. Absolutely. Take me back. Yeah, I, had, I think I had the best possible upbringing a person can have, which is good parents and no money. I didn't get famous or rich young, which I also thank the, the Lord for. I think a, a lot of these people who get famous online quite early, I think they miss out a lot of them. Guys, one thing I really, really underestimate is what these guys are talking about right now you are going to struggle and as a man you are more likely to face challenges and and go through things that that are, are going to be hard and they're going to be tough to suck up but you're going to have to do them because that's your responsibility as a man in today's society 100 years ago 400 years ago it's 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 been what happens since the beginning of time right and we talk about facing adversity and these challenges right this is what shapes you. This is what makes you a better man. This is what makes you more susceptible and more resilient to the things that are going to keep happening, right? We talk about this idea of, of being born into a poor family or being born into a rich family. The fact of the matter is that either or doesn't necessarily 100% dictate who you're going to be. But what I think these guys are talking about is that when you face challenges, right? When, you, when you're broke as fuck, when you have no money, when your parents can't tell you yes whenever you want something when you're you're always facing some sort of challenge in your life especially as a kid you're going to grow up and you're going to learn that this is the way this is the reality of things this is how life is going to be 
right? When you're born into a rich, pampered family that gives you everything, never tells you no, right? Generally, you you tend to become a person that doesn't see life as it is. You don't live in reality. You live in la la lands, right? Somewhere where everything is perfect, everything is sunshine, rainbows, and candy corn, and all that. Be aware that facing challenges is what shapes you to be better. Life. It's uh, not real life. It's not real life. It's not real life. No, I had real jobs and I did real things and I was really broke and I was really on the bus and really trying to pay rent and doing real stuff for a long time. I wrote a line in here and I think you could relate to it. Um, a poor man is broke. A rich man is broken. So. There we go. It's what we just talked about, right? Poor man is broke. A rich man is broken. Poor man who doesn't have a lot of money, right? Faces a lot of challenges, goes through a lot of shit, broke, no money. Rich man, on the other hand, has all the money in the world. And to the point where that money isn't something that satisfies him because it, it comes easy. It's not real. It's fake. Right. And I'm sure these guys are going to touch on the subject that when money doesn't satisfy your needs, when women don't necessarily satisfy those needs, what are you going to divert to? Right. You're going to divert to power. You're going to divert to control over other people just because it satisfies those needs that money can't satisfy those cravings that you have to be all powerful to be in charge right and i'm sure these guys are going to talk about it in just a second so if you're broke you could figure out a way to be rich but if you were given everything and you don't know how to manage this life you're broken and you, you don't feel like you've earned anything i've met more depressed rich men than i've met depressed broke men it's amazing you say that because there's two answers to that. My first one is, I love that you say that because I always say I'm not rich. I'm a poor man with a lot of money. I always used to say that. And I don't want to brag or anything, but just because I get asked this question a lot. I've been extremely successful. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. In fact, I think our last valuation across everything we own was we're almost at B now. So we're doing very, very, yeah. I'm a, I'm a billionaire. Top G's a billionaire. So we're doing extremely well. That's the first thing. The second thing, it's actually, it's great that you say that because I completely agree. Because if you're born with everything, if you're born with all this money, but you have no aspiration, nothing to actually to crap, grasp onto and trying to achieve, then money doesn't make you happy. But then you can analyze this from another angle, right? We were just talking earlier, we can always pivot back to who the matrix are, who's in charge. So let me ask you- Do you, you have somebody that well, you- Well, let me ask you a question. Okay, go ahead. If you're born into a dynasty, let's say a banking dynasty, and you're born a billionaire, and you have everything you've ever wanted ever. And money has absolutely no value at all. Mm. And a brand new Ferrari doesn't mean a thing. You could buy one every 10 minutes for the rest of your life. And money doesn't make you happy. What's the one thing that's gonna make you happy? Controlling others. It's almost like there's some truth to it, right? I literally just spoke about this. This is, this is my first like reaction to the video, but do you see why, like, even a, even, even a guy like myself, I mean, I'm, I'm young, I don't have a lot of life experience, so to speak, right? But it, it's crazy how when you start to pay attention to things, you can sort of realize where the fuck-ups in people are, like, where people make mistakes. This right here, right, proves that all you need to start doing is paying more attention, just being more aware of your surroundings. I've been from the absolute bottom to the absolute top. I've seen it all. And once you get past a certain level of wealth, once you get past Same. a certain level of money, yeah, but then you re then you understand what money is, right? So we say about money not being real. Money is not real from a governmental perspective because they just print it, it's nothing. But money is truthfully the stored time and energy of other people. If you that have is. money, you have stored time and energy of other humans. Because, because people are hourly rates. That's right. Because I can take that money and make someone else use their time and energy for X thing. Got it. So, so what's, it's a different version of slavery. Money runs the world. I mean, I think he just said it. <laughs> it's modern slavery, but I digress. Oh, absolutely. Because if, if I'm going to come along and say, you're no longer my slave. As my slave, you had to work for, for a house and a car. You're no longer my slave. And by the way, guys, like if you're looking at this and being like, oh, but what am I supposed to do? You know, I need to make money. I need to save up. Completely understandable, right? You, you need to trade your time for money. That's just how it is. You need to build an empire, but first you need to build capital. Completely understandable, but realize that these are the kinds of things that need to be temporary and not long-term. You need to use this short-term time, right? Trade your time for money temporarily. Use that money to then 
make more money to to scale, right? Start a business, uh, invest, trade, trade stocks, make a portfolio, whatever it is that it, that you're interested in. There, there's so many ways to get this kind of information on the, the internet because it's so vast. But the point is, stop trading your time for money long term. Realize that the next 40, 50 years of your life, you shouldn't be spending it in, in an office or at a nine to five job. You should be working towards something, working towards building yourself, right? Building a business, building a, an empire. Realize these things. So the people who are broken raised on money are so obsessed with power and control, which, is, which explains a lot of the society we're in because they don't look up to God. These people think they are God. So that's that's the biggest fault and and they're trying to make robots of us all they're trying to ins all right so i'm not going to sit here and pretend like like i agree with everything he says right um while i while i'm not denying that it's true there's no reason that a a guy like me or or a person like you who's trying to make it in the world there's no way that this is the kind of mentality that's good in any sort of way right there's no reason that a person who's currently trading their time for money and, and trying to build an empire, trying to build a business should be thinking like this, right? It, it's not going to get you anywhere. What is going to get you somewhere is the realization that you can't work at a nine to five job for the rest of your life. It's not sustainable. Your body's going to burn out. The body has, has specific kinds of limits and so does the mind, right? Um, and when you follow the same routine and you follow the same um program every single day eventually something is going to get set off and don't get me wrong the mind is infinite you can take your mind wherever you want to right and imagine and you can believe whatever it is that you want to believe and those things can see can, can be fruitful can can see the light of day but what i'm trying to say is that when you follow the same pattern every single day and you don't change it up every once in a while you don't find balance in your life you're going to burn out it's it's going to happen it's not sustainable so realize that that this message is is meant to wake you up right meant to get you back on on your feet and you need to start realizing that you need to start fucking building something i think male depression can be fixed with respect i want to tap into depression what's your thoughts on that i i think that it's massively overdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. i say depression isn't real because i speak in absolutes i think the idea of feeling depressed is real i don't feel the i, I don't feel like it's a clinical disease that you catch from the sky and it can't be fixed i feel like depression is feedback pain is feedback and your mind and body is telling you something must change and if you make those changes, you will feel happier. I don't buy into the idea that it is a disease. I think it's situational and you must. I mean, who can argue with that, right? Um, depression has, has grown, the, this, this sort of clinical depression where people become depressed and, and it's sort of like a tangible thing has now become a very, very popular subject amongst our generation, right? And the previous couple of generations. Why? right we live in this in this attention economy in this world where now social media exists and you can basically see the pictures and the paintings that other people are are programming into you on social media like hey i live this life i make this this much money and this is how i do it by my course it's the typical financial guru right and we're sort of getting sucked into this into this lifestyle and sort of like diminishing our own capabilities because we're seeing other people that might be younger than us that are doing greater and better things. Let's change your situation and your actions and your decisions to feel better. And that's why I say it's not real. It's not a disease. I, I have a point of view on it. I wanted to share mine and see if it kind of matches yours sure. and if you have a, a, a viewpoint on it. Sure. Um, when I grew up, I, was, I, I like to describe myself. And then a lot of people get annoyed about that. They're like, why do you talk about myself? Because who the fuck am I going to talk about? Do you know what I mean? Like, I hate that. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to sit there and talk about Joe. I don't know who the fuck Joe is. Yeah. I'm going to talk about George. Yeah. George was raised, if I came home, I had a really tough childhood. Yeah. And that's documented. I have, a, I have a tough childhood when it came to making friends. I wasn't educated. They didn't know I was dyslexic. I had a lot of problems. When I came home, if I ever looked at my mom like I'm depressed, she goes, no, you're not. And she nipped it right there. Yeah. Stop saying that. And then I grew up. 
and I'm reflecting. I'm going to bring it back to the Bible. Yeah. In the beginning was the what? In the beginning the word. was light, wasn't it? In, in the beginning was the stars, and uh, I should know this. In the beginning was the word. The word, you're right. And he created everything with what? His mouth. Yeah. And everything's vibration. Yeah. People that don't even believe in God believe in energy. So for those of you who don't really know what he's what he's trying to get to, he's he's talking about um, manifestations, right? The idea where if you tell yourself something enough, it's it's more likely to happen, right? But a lot of a lot of the problems that I'm seeing in today's society and a lot of the, the struggles that I see in other people that are my age or a little bit older, a little bit younger, is that they sort of take it too literally, right? Manifestation isn't just telling yourself that you are something or that you will be something. It's taking those steps and taking those actions to be that person, right? You can't, it's like what we said earlier, you can't expect something and not take the right steps or not act in the right way and still expect that same outcome, still expect that same reward. Reap what you sow, right? I'll say this for the sake of it, not because I care too much about what other people will think, but when I was little, like a little bit about my story, when I was smaller, I was diagnosed with, um, <clears throat> with threats, with minor threats. Uh, I actually had a seizure when I was smaller. Um, obviously ADHD came, came into that later on and my, my childhood wasn't the greatest thing ever, right? Because I would have these involuntary movements. My eyes would twitch. My, my head would twitch. I would have like muscle spasms. That wasn't really the best look for a young kid in, in preschool and middle school and all that. So, and, and even going into high school, um, I'm going to say I, I still sometimes have that, um, that effect. I was able to better control it through meditation and through uh, positive thinking and manifestation. So that really helped. But I'm saying this for you to realize that everybody has their own fucking struggles. Everybody has their own problems, the, the things that make them fucked up. But that's why we have our accountability mirror. That's why we have that place where we can sit down and talk to, talk to yourself and realize what are the things that are fucked up about my life and how can I fix them? That's what's important. That's what separates you from other people. And that's where I think this whole depression aspect came to fruition. They're just trying to take the easy way out. That's One, right. labeling myself. Yep. Sorry guys, I can't do it today. I have anxiety yep. or I have depression. Yep. Now, mind you, there might be some people out there that actually wake up and they have a lot of things on them. I think you need to find God. Oh, absolutely. That's it. Because if you had a God, you would... Could not be more true, right? Nobody's denying that you have shit going on in your life. I understand that there may be a lot of people with a lot of shit going on, right? With a lot of things that are preventing them from taking certain steps. Completely understandable. But if you don't take the right, the right steps, the right, the right outlook towards life, and you, you sit yourself in a corner and you tell yourself that you're not capable of something because of your situation, you're not, you're not really helping yourself. You're going to stay in that corner for the rest of your life. And that, that, that shouldn't, that shouldn't be right because what happens the day that you die right and for you religious folks out there you, you go to heaven right and you sit in a lot in a line like david goggins talks about and god is in front of you and he shows you this board right of you your name and all these little things that you could have been right and you tell yourself well, well fuck like how is that possible how could i have made that much money or or married such a wonderful person, or, you know, built an empire. That doesn't sound like me. And God tells you this is what you could have been if you would have taken these steps, if you would have just changed this small part about your life. You can look at it a different, bunch of different ways, but you just talked about a man looking in the mirror and being proud of his body to motivate himself. That's pride. Absolutely. Pride to an extent, right? Pride to an extent. But if it's your motivator, that's the problem. It Okay, um, so definitely an interesting subject to touch on. Uh, I, I half agree and I half disagree. I, I do believe that pride is an extent of our happiness, right? If you're not prideful in what you do, you're not going to be necessarily happy about it, right? 
But I also believe that if you are prideful in your work, right, it, it can be a motivator. And it, and it isn't always necessarily a problem. It isn't necessarily an issue if you're motivated by, by the things that you achieve, by, by your pride. Um, so like the example that they gave, if you work out, you're, you're building up your body, you're going to be this bodybuilder, you're going to compete or be an influencer. What drives you to get there is, is being able to look at yourself in the mirror and, and say that you look 10 times better or twice as good as yesterday or as last year or, or as a couple of months ago, or even when you started, right? That is what keeps pushing you to be better. I will say, um, if pride is your main source of motivation, you will cap because what, what happens when you can't improve on that work anymore? What happens when it's absolutely perfect? What's going to drive you to, to keep going, right? And so this is kind of what I think George is talking about in this sense. Everybody I needs a from. certain type of emotion. You need yeah. fear, but you're not going to live fear. Well, of course, life. we have our default emotions that we seek. And this is the point I'm making because when I talk to people, I think we all have our default emotions we seek. <clears> and depressed people, their default emotion that they're looking for is sympathy. They want sympathy either from themselves or from somebody else. And they always have a soft story. It's always about how hard their life was and they did drugs excuses these 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 people who always tell themselves that they have these these disorders that they they were diagnosed with this with that and they want they want that mommy that inside voice or those people to tell them that it's okay that they can rest that that they don't have to push harder because they are at a disadvantage like all this crap and and this is what a lot of people get a kick out of it this is what a lot of people seek and and it's really sad because it's it's this diminishing attitude, this, this victim attitude where, oh, this happened to me, so therefore I can't, I can't continue or I can't push harder or I can't be a better version of myself. And it's really, really, really degrading. Very sad. All right, so this is the lesser part of the podcast, but I, I, I hope that you were able to take something from this video. I didn't necessarily make this video for any specific reason. I, I more so wanted to try out a new concept and and to see if this is something that you guys like watching me reacting to videos and giving my own input right i know we talked about a lot of different subjects right sort of within the same uh, niche group within uh growth and self-development self-development motivation um like drive what makes you happy pride uh manifestation all those things that come together and can make you a better person everybody. all right so that was the video. I, I do hope, like I said, that you took something away from it. Um, yeah, let me know if this concept is something that you enjoyed, something that uh, you like watching so that I can continue doing it. All right, guys, I appreciate your support and your love for my channel and for my content. As always, stay positive, stay motivated. Peace.